Hey, Flavia. Hello. Nice to meet you again. How you doing? Great. How's South Star been for you so far? Yeah, pretty cool, huh? Yeah. You've been been hanging around for a couple of days. Did you yeah. get to go to some of the dinners? Yeah, I got to go to the parties and the dinners. <laughs> but it's, it's just an amazing atmosphere. I mean, what they put together this year was fantastic. It really is exciting. Yeah, I think. it's really good. And um, I mean, part of what we've been talking about in these podcasts is, uh, I suppose, trying to get behind. Know some of the awesome stuff that's happening in South Australia, and I think you know these kind of events actually start to you start to realize, wow, who are these people? And I remember when I first uh, saw you speak, you know, it, I was uh, blown away by just some of this cool stuff that's actually happening that, that you don't hear about um, as much as you should. I don't think. I think I think South Australia are always focus on working and less on PR. Yeah. <laughs> but PR is important because it's telling the stories. You know, entrepreneurship is is a hero's journey, and you have to tell the stories more as I can, you can. Eh? Yeah. Yeah. It inspires our people, and uh, there's so much going on in South Australia. Yeah. So much going on. So I think people are starting, you know, understanding this, though. Huh? And, and you're right about the PR. Like it does. We 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 need to like shout a bit louder about it, right? Like oh, we need to yeah. be a bit. Like, <laughs> and it, and, it, and uh, we talk about it a lot, but you know, the Australian kind of tall poppy syndrome, or or not not wanting to sort of you know shout out and say, "Wow, we're doing these amazing things," but. Uh, well, we should. Why we should because it's not about yourself. It's no. about what what other the perception of other the, the inspiration and when you show them it can't be done. So many people just follow, you know. Mm. So yeah, I, I think your investment. That that's it. It's uh, if you can see if someone can see. Wow! Look what uh, look what Flavia's doing with Fleet Space. It's like, well, maybe I could do that. And I think especially I'm a normal girl. You know what yeah. I mean? Like I'm 30 years old. Totally normal person. So probably people think you know she has done it and. We can do it. That that kind of thought. Yeah, I think it's, we should encourage it. I think one of the things that I've found over the last two days chatting to people is that, and I haven't actually been watching the talk, so I, I, a few people have come out and I've sort of, you know, not really known much about, you know, who they are and what they do, but everybody's just, everybody's just humble and normal and going about doing, you know, but everybody's got passion, right? And they're, they're excited about what they're doing. And, and, you know, I think, I think more than half of people have said that, you know, they've probably made quite a lot of money. It's not about that money. It's about the, you know, the the joy of you know being curious and doing new things exactly. and waking up and what 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 makes you excited when you get up every day? I don't know. It's space, hey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, entrepreneurship is hard. No matter no matter what you do, you know, no matter if, what kind of company you got, space is not harder. It's just more complicated because you need to jump on a rocket. Yeah. But it's fun. Yeah. You know, um, I think it's an inspiring type of entrepreneurship. Because people look at space and think it's probably the hardest things you can ever try. Mm. You know, everything you do with space, you can never check if it's right. Yeah. You, you spend years and jump on a rocket and you're in space and you're like crossing fingers. You can't fix it anymore, right? So it's hard. It's, it's, a, it's a big gamble. Yeah. Um, but it makes me, that's what makes me happy i love it i wouldn't do anything else so that's my thing have you always space, been fascinated yeah. with space yeah i'm like a super nerd you know <laughs> so i'm the little girl that wanted to be an astronaut i studied rockets and space uh, yeah i'm a nerd so i would not do anything else we just um asked uh, pam um about her experience you know going into space and it was it was really cool wasn't it like uh just I th she mentioned the perspective you know literally the perspective that you get actually looking down on earth but right. realizing that that's a finite resource that we have there and, and I think Pam is also one of the most humble person you mm. would ever meet you know she I think she's got fear to fly as well she's oh, an really? astronaut you know like come on so you kind of see people uh, as unreachable but mm. it, it's all about resiliency and passion you know uh, entrepreneurship every day you wake up and you think god another day this is gonna be hard so it's just that thing that has to keep you alive if you don't love it you will give up you know. What have been some of the, uh, well, let's go, uh, positives and then also negatives of, of doing business here in, uh, in SA? Uh, there's been a lot of positives. Mm. Uh, they are super supportive and our customers are willing to help you and support you and give it a try. Um, I think it's just a perception. Uh, people around the world don't know how much South Australia has changed. Yeah. They don't know how much talent there is. I mean, our universities are amazing. So mm. that education piece that the state needs to do abroad and going, get, going back to PR. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Not showing, but sometimes our successful stories and, uh, you know, great, great, amazing, inspirational story that make everyone say, oh, I'm, I'm going to have a look at that. You know, that state is, is kicking go. So we do a lot of that, you know, and we try. Um, I think that's a pretty cool place on entrepreneurship lately. I, 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 
I came here five years ago, mm. and the first year I was like, "Where am I? This is never gonna happen." <laughs> but something happened, you know. Some magic kicked in, and uh, and now, uh, yeah, I wouldn't be any other place, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Why did you come here in the first place? What, yeah, what? my husband. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's South Australian, <laughs> so that was a bit of a love import. Yeah. Uh, but it worked out. <laughs> nice. I did the same thing with my wife, but we were we were living in London, and she. Uh, I was happy over there, but she came here for a wedding, and she's like, "Why? Why are we living in London?" Like, is she is she English? She's American. Actually. That she's American. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, well, London yeah. is a complicated city. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I get it. I get it. We got kids here as well, and I yeah. think it's a good city for for little ones. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Lots of people have been saying that. I think, but it, I think that in the in the ten years that I've been back, or seven or eight years from London, the 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 space that so we play design and, and tech and. Um, innovation at Adelaide's actually changed quite a lot. Oh, a lot. Yeah, yeah. In the five years I've seen is a massive change. I didn't know how they managed to do it so fast. Mm. Something that I will never understand. But, you know, I think all of us play a role in that. So we've done really well. It's a, it's a, fam- fam- Adelaide is a family. You have to be in Adelaide to understand that it's like half a degree of separation to any single yeah. person. <laughs> and there's a lot of tech, you know, defense and stuff like that. Yeah. Everyone knows everyone. When people don't understand what, what Adelaide, go so fast on everything they've mm. never lived here and they really don't know everyone knows everyone so it's literally just getting on a phone and make things happen yeah, cool. all the time that's what i feel and I, and I think that the 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 more that we can sort of band together as a community and not and not sort of see each other as competition or whatever it might be i mean especially pam was saying we have as uh, many space startups here in sa as, as they do in uh, in sydney um Correct, you know, with a yeah. quarter of the population or whatever it might be. So that's pretty exciting. That's exciting, yeah. And we great. spoke to Lloyd before, Pam, so it's been a, been a space afternoon. This is a space so. afternoon. Because <laughs> <laughs> South Australia is really doing well in space. Yeah. yeah. I think they're the center of the space universe, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what's, the, what's your vision for the next 10 years of space? Like, where do, you, where do you see things going? I don't know. Personally, I really hope that these startups will do really, really well and we will be able to do amazing things with this one, the next one. I will just keep kicking off startup uh, <laughs> in space. Space. I think Australia play a massive, massive. It will play uh, probably a massive role in space if we do it right. If we help entrepreneurs, if we help people to come here, uh, it's a little bit of work to do. But yeah. we're gonna go to to the moon. We're gonna go to Mars. I mean, we are literally gonna go to Mars in five years. So yeah. we better be part of that. You don't want to get out of that. So I, I hope that Australia will play a role there. You know that Elon Musk guy. Yeah, yeah he's going to Mars. Yeah. <laughs> What do you think makes Australia kind of a good candidate to, to be at the forefront of the... Uh, there is, know? I don't know, there is a lot of, I mean, I know, there is a lot, a lot, a lot of technologies that we build for, you know, we Australia's really front run and on Earth Yeah. that I think uh, can be used in space a lot. Mm. Um, hey, all this mining, mining expertise, we go come in handy, Mars, you know, it's yeah. uh, you know, come in handy. <laughs> But more than anything, it's this entrepreneur spirit now and this momentum and uh, very nimble. Mm. Uh, yeah, they call it puppet syndrome, but I also call it like, oh, let's work really, really hard to demonstrate the world. They were really, really good. But at the end, we do. Yeah. What I'm very fascinated about that most of these entrepreneurs you have seen today, and I was watching the panels, I one after the other on the panels, the speakers. A lot of people coming from overseas. Yeah. You know, most of these entrepreneurs are not Australians. That yeah. kind of rings the bell for me. Like, um, <laughs> we want Australians, you know, to take the risk. Probably when you, when you, you know, I don't know about your wife, but when you travel and when you live in other countries, it's just a wild card. <laughs> You're like, oh, yeah. I'm going to risk it a little bit further. Yeah. Australia needs to step up, you know. And, and we talked about that with a few other people just in terms of. Like the, the benefit of, well, like with Pam going, actually leaving the atmosphere and looking back on Earth, but just travel itself gives you that different perspective. So sometimes going away and then exactly. coming back makes you feel more, you know, I, I felt much more confident starting my freelance career in London than I probably would have here because, you, know, you know, you know what I mean? But yeah, it's just, just having, having, having the guts to do it. But I think we kind of, from a young age, we kind of need to start giving, you know, the, the next generation the confidence to be able to do that. To go for it. And, yeah, dr- yeah. and dream big as well, right? Exactly. I think there's, uh, you know, we need to be thinking global and yeah, even further than global. Spacey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I agree. Yeah, no, it's really cool. So for, for our listeners that don't actually know about uh, what, what Fleet does, tell us a little bit more about the uh, about what you do on a day-to-day. Uh, Fleet, uh, we are deploying a constellation of very small satellites, uh, probably as big as a shoebox, mm. to do Internet of Things uh, we connect devices, devices in industry. So the, one of the biggest revolution is it in the world that everything will be connected. You know, mm. you uh, probably we will use less less 
internet ourselves because things will do stuff for us. Eh? And you think about self-driving car yeah. and uh, any large scale of industry that runs on sensors. So it's a big change that a lot of people don't see. We see it, so we're going to create an internet for it. So this is what we are doing. So we have launched two satellites last week. We are oh. launching two next week. Um, I just came from New Zealand that I got an amazing rocket. And you see, it's got a rocket, you know? Cool. It's got a rocket lab, and uh, it's just a, a rocket for small satellites, uh, like kind of an Uber in space. You know, they want to bring you in space whenever you want. Okay. It was a mission control looking at this launch. It was super cool. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, Whereabouts yeah. in New Zealand we did was it. that from? In Auckland. So yeah. they launched from, a, from an island called Maya, but the mission control was in Auckland. And it's this is the first startup unicorn in New Zealand. Mm. And they're launching from New Zealand, so hey, Australia needs to step up. <laughs> <laughs> it's time to launch from here as well. What? The, how, how do we do that? What, what needs to change? I think the the space agency and the government know there are a couple of startups that are building rockets, and has been a launch last week. And uh, Gilmore, one of another, the so Black, Black Sky and Gilmore are, are launching rockets. And now we just need to find a spot. And Lloyd is trying to find it for us inside Australia. So yeah. this is exciting. Yeah, two, two weeks he's going to have a big, uh, big reveal here soon. So. We shall see. <laughs> Where he's going to put this rocket facility, you know? In Victor Hub? We shall see. <laughs> oh, it is exciting though. So what kind of clients are you dealing with then? Like who? A lot of industries. So mm. oil and gas and mining and agriculture and transport. All these big industry that are going through the fourth industrial revolution changing the way they operate and mm. uh, it's a huge change we, we do all sorts of things and uh, all over the world and it's just fascinating to see the world changing a little bit just last week i had this client that wants to connect like millions of beehives in us wow. via space and i'm like wow that's that's pretty cool that's you really know? cool these are important but there's from that to equipment tracking to oil and gas company people that want to deploy million of devices mm. so that we can check things and track things and understand why we waste so much water and 60% yeah. of food in the supply chain. Now it's time to track things. But to track things, you need internet everywhere. So this is what we do. Yeah, cool. We've had some really interesting chats around AI and I think there's a misconception around what AI potentially is, but especially around yeah, like tracking and, and preventative measures and, and Correct. We, we were talking about well actually we were talking about blockchain, weren't we, in, in regards to water, but um, ways technology can actually, you know Big change. Big changes. There is uh, four or five technologies that for everyone I think we don't grab the impact they will have, now blockchain, AI internet mm. of things and our quantum computing, I mean I'm a rocket scientist but I don't get them all, I think <laughs> it's a matter of understanding what practically they will do yeah there are a lot of innovators around the world that are trying to do to make it happen so well that was what we we're talking about for in regards to blockchain Pe people always want to ask like how does it work under the hood but it doesn't really matter what happens under the hood it's do like you know what happened in the internet nowadays under the hood no, if i ask you yeah. what is internet you're yeah. like i google yeah. <laughs> right but why is it with 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 with, with ai or blockchain people always they want to see that what, 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 actually what is are the, the practical applications it's the it? beginning of a change mm. you know and when internet started people were exactly the same yeah, okay. when the iphone started people this? were like what exactly is happening in the iphone that it was not happening in the nokia yeah, what sure. is this it's the beginning of a change when people will start seeing just the the, the, the use in front of technology the, the they will forget use. about it you know yeah. they will be like yeah whatever yeah sure <laughs> you know like you know there's many algorithms i don't care we don't care what the internet does right no. 4g do we know what 4g is but now everyone wants to know 5g is yeah, exactly sure. what protocol it's doing <laughs> and what radiation is having so humanity don't cope absolutely well with changes mm till the very last moment when changes actually change people's life. They bring magic and humans forget about the tech. But entrepreneurs are exactly in the moment where everyone freaks out about the technologies yeah. and they need to find a way to get it you know, into the world. So it's a really hard spot to be in, but it's fun. Are you optimistic about the future? Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> you know, we're going to Mars, we're going to the moon. We're gonna, yeah, it's fun. That's exciting. Would you like to get up there? Yeah, I think I would love it, you know. And I think my my daughters will go. You That's know, awesome. In twenty, thirty years, they will just probably go on space on holiday. And yeah. Technologies are always be slower than what we expect, but I think we are getting there. Yep. Mm. Uh, I would like to be taking an hour and a half uh, trip back over to Europe rather than a uh, 
that's that's yeah. that's my thing. I'm just, I mean, like I always tell everyone my next venture is gonna be that that plane because yeah. it's for the insane. Weekend. Like you know, <laughs> every time I need to go to Rome, it's twenty four hours yeah. with those kids. It's hell, <laughs> you know. But uh, sometimes you really have to get so frustrated, you know, to invent something. So we're gonna get there. <laughs> awesome. Are you hanging around for the next couple of days? You're going to be getting involved in anything else uh, this afternoon? Or yeah, maybe I'm going to gonna hang around a little bit <laughs> and uh, get to the kids and think about them. And, uh, you know, they, they, they actually get this space things pretty, pretty good. And mm. we are three years old and are five years old. And uh, when we had the launch last week, Katarina, she's five. She's like, Mama, so I'm, I'm watching the rocket go up. It goes really slow. <laughs> and I'm like, Give us a break, child. <laughs> so she's, uh, she's, she's into the challenge. She's going to be okay. That's awesome. Oh, thanks so much for taking the time. Thanks to have for a chat. having me. Really appreciate it. <laughs> Ciao, nice, thanks. Nice to see you again. Bye.